the episode of The Educated Idiot. Today, we're gonna to explore the four liter, the amount of sludge that was in it, and what we did to remove it out of the engine. When we completed our inspection of Marla Hooch and the four liter from the mechanical side, uh, we found that the oil had sludged inside the engine. Taking a look at what actually causes the oil to sludge has a different variety of what causes can happen. Uh, excessive idling and a ton of short trips, which does not allow the engine oil to cycle through its heat span. Uh, environmental contaminations into the oil, such as dirt and debris. Uh, condensation, which can cause contaminants in the oil, such as coolant or water. Uh, those have a different contamination in the way of sludge. It'll actually be more of a brown or a yellow sludge. Uh, in our case, it was black. Uh, and then also time. Lack of oil changes and maintenance to the engine and the oil inside of it can cause it to sludge as well. Performing your maintenance is a little more regularly in the way of three or five or even 7,000 miles, depending on the type of oil in the engine that you're running. Uh, will actually be reduced in the way of sludge. Uh, this will reduce the contaminants inside of it, allow you to look at the oil and the water contamination. What happens when the oil does start to sludge? Uh, well, number one, you're gonna notice it's gonna get a little darker quicker during oil changes. So when you check your oil at 1,000 or 2,000 miles, you may notice that the color is becoming a little more dark. Uh, second is going to be lower oil pressure to the upper sections of the, oil, of the engine. Uh, you're going to start noticing a little bit of a ticking noise coming from that upper end and the valve train. Uh, you're going to also notice uh, on a long term that your mileage may even go down because the engine is working metal to metal opposed to the friction enhancement from the oil is not allowing it to move as freely. Uh, you have potential bearing failure in there as well. Uh, in our case, it looks like time was the inevitable on this one. Uh, all of the oil sludge was mainly in the lower portion of the engine, and I truly believe what was actually in the oil filter itself was caused by us uh, driving it to and from and back and forth for the small periods that we were driving it. Uh, but I believe we've got it corrected, uh, so let's take a look and see what we actually did in the way of uh, correcting this. First part of the correction, we took off the valve cover, the oil pan, and the oil pump off of the engine. With these components off, we used whichever method worked best for us to get the sludge, uh, almost an inch and a half of sludge out of the oil pan. Uh, we then removed the oil pump and we took care to note the orientation of the indexing piece so that we can put it back into place when we reinstalled the oil pump. Once all three of those units were off the engine, we took it over and put it into our parts washer. Uh, this is the Summit Racing 20 gallon parts washer. Uh, part number on that is SUM-909021. We'll have a link to this in the description as well as the degreaser that we use. This is the Summit Racing parts washer degreaser. Uh, we use two gallons of this and eight gallons of warm and hot water. Uh, I definitely recommend using warm or hot water in this, and I believe before we use this again, we're going to install a solution heater, allow this thing to get a little warmer while we've got parts in it cleaning. After the units have come out of the parts washer, we started reassembling the engine. Looking up top, we replaced the oil filter after cleaning out the oil filter journals. Looking up top, we've replaced the three cables that control the throttle as well as the rear and the front crankcase ventilation valves. Now, after 23 years, they do become pretty brittle and they will break upon removal, so we'll have to replace that soon. Looking underneath, Chrysler made it easy on us to get the oil pan off. There are two bolts underneath the torque converter cover that we need to replace as well as removing the starter and setting it simply aside. Once those two pieces are out of the way, you're able to remove the bolts for the oil pan and drop it out from the rear. Before we fired this unit for the first time, after removing the sludge from the oil pan and the oil pump, we wanted to make sure we had good oil pressure. Removing the fuel pump relay from the relay and fuse box up front in the engine compartment, we also replaced the oil pressure sensor with a mechanical gauge. I wanted to make sure it was 100% accurate before actually starting this motor. Cranking the engine over, uh, we noticed we had 20 to 25 PSI with new, brand new oil in it. And the oil we used is the super mobile conventional oil. 
1030, we wanted something a little thicker because we're assuming that the engine components have laxed a little bit in their sizes, meaning that we want a little thicker oil in there. Seeing that we had good oil pressure, I felt confident this vehicle was going to start and not seize shortly after startup. Replaced the fuel pump relay, left the mechanical gauge installed on the sensor port. We did not add any of our chemical additive to the unit at this time. We wanted to make sure that it would run. With it running, we saw that we had about 30 PSI from initial startup. As the vehicle started to warm up and the engine oil and coolant started to warm as well, we noticed our oil pressure would climb to about 40 PSI. Looking at all the recommendations, that is what Chrysler says this unit should idle about is about 40 PSI on oil pressure. Once we felt good with that, we removed the mechanical gauge, replaced the oil pressure sending units, and then we started to install our seafoam product. Seafoam recommends putting in one ounce of fluid for every quart of oil that's in the motor. The four liter takes six quarts of oil, so we're gonna add six ounces of this item. Seafoam also recommends adding this additive to your oil and the crankcase 100 to 300 miles before its next oil change. We probably will not get to that 100 miles to utilize its full capacity. But what we are going to do is we're going to allow it to idle and to get up to temperature, and then we're going to take it around the property and run it up and down the road a few times. That is going to let everything circulate and clean. Then we're going to drain the oil and see what it looks like. I appreciate everybody watching. Now we're going to start Marla Hooch again so you guys can see how she runs. You're gonna notice a little bit of a misfire. In the next video, stay tuned because we're gonna do a tune up. We're gonna drain the oil out and see how much of that contaminant and sludge we can get out of the motor. Thank you for getting educated. Remember, if you hated that video, you know what to do. But if you liked the video, hit that like button. While you're clicking buttons, might as well click the subscribe and the bell buttons to be the first to watch the new Educated Idiot videos.